Tired? Stressed out? Overworked? I've had it! Enough already! It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be that way. Your host, Bob Roth, executive director of the David Lynch Foundation, has learned that you can thrive without tension in this fast-paced world. This is Success Without Stress with Bob Roth on Sirius XM Indy 104. This is Bob Roth, your host for Success Without Stress on Indy 104. And my guest today is Hugh Jackman. Not only, it, and I'm going to read this, Hugh. Because, oh, really? Yeah, I'm going to read this here for you. He said, <laughs> Hugh has won international recognition for his roles in major films, notably as a superhero and romance characters. He is known for his long-running role as Wolverine, having already come out, in the X-Men film series, as well as his leads in Caden Leopold, Van Helsing, The Prestige, Australia, Real Steel, Les Mis, and Prisoners. His work in Les Mis earned him his first Academy Award nomination for Best Actor and his first Golden Globe Award for Best Actor, Motion Picture Musical or Comedy, in 2013. He's also a singer, dancer, and actor in stage musicals and won a Tony Award for his role in The Boy from Oz. Hugh is a four-time uh, Tony Awards host. He won the Emmy Award for those appearances, one of those appearances, and he also hosted the 81st Academy Awards in February 2009. I said that for the one person in the world who doesn't know that. <laughs> now we're going to put that aside, and I get to say that Hugh Jackman and his wife and his kids are very dear friends of mine. I'm glad you added that. Yeah, because very when dear I friend. think of Bob, that's what I think. Yeah. Uh, uh, it is so great. Uh, of all the things I've done uh, promoting this movie, this is this is my half hour to just be and completely <laughs> chill. I love being with you, Bob. Yeah, I love being with you, Hugh. And uh, last night we were watching a little bit of the basketball That's game. That's right. And then it got interrupted because... Yes, because my w wife wanted to watch a recorded show from Oprah. Happy <laughs> wife, happy life. Really good. This is tip number one to success without stress. <laughs> You're here on Sirius with Bob Roth. Happy wife, happy life. Okay, we're going to plunge right into the, the whole theme of this, of success without stress, is that a person can be successful. They can do the things they want to do in their life, but they don't have to get stressed out about it. Mm. And the common denominator in, in this is meditation, mm -hmm. transcendental meditation. And I wanted to ask you right off the bat, and then we have many other things to talk about, when did your interest in meditation in general begin? And then how did we get to know each other? I uh, Not that I don't know, but I want you to tell I me. Understand. How it, yeah. When uh, I was at drama school, so I was 23, I think, at the time, there was a guy who I went with that just had this endless sort of energy, creativity at his fingertips. He, there was just something about him that, you know, when you meet people and you go, oh, there's a secret here, I want to know. And I said, what? I pretty much said that. There's something about you, man. What are you doing? Because I really admire it and I want to have it. And uh, he said, come with me. And I went to the School of Practical Philosophy, which is actually all around the world. It's here in New York. It's everywhere. About 18 months into attending that school, I was offered meditation, which is, <clears throat> I'm told, a form of transcendental meditation. Well, it, it was transcendental meditation. That was 20 years ago. So, yeah, 21 years ago. And so I started meditating then. And you and I came into contact through my son, actually, because my son was one of those kids from age of three was really interested in things metaphysical and spiritual and, I mean, genuinely interested and knowledgeable and wanted to meditate and did meditate. Uh, you actually initiated him. And so we became friends. And Oscar, to this day, who you call Oscar Yogi, Oscar loves you. And I really think for a kid who was that advanced, some parts of this world were tough for him, you know, because finding friends and kids who uh, he could relate to was tough. And I think for many ways you kind of saved him in that period. And so Dem and I were so grateful, but we became great friends. And, and you actually reinitiated me and my wife and some friends into meditation. Uh, I, I'm always at the school. You should always be ready to learn something. And just because you've done something for 15, 17 years doesn't mean you know everything. And it really helped me actually to what was the? I remember there was you were at a t tipping point there with your med your meditation practice. I, I I'm someone who's diligent. I'm disciplined. I I learned all those things from my father. So for what a lot of people get stuck in the meditating twice a day, I didn't get stuck in that. But there was a sense or a little bit of a shadow of a thought of this is good for you. I should do this. I've got to meditate, which is exactly the thing you're trying to get away from in meditation. The as you 
beautifully put it, the gotta gotta mind, you know, I gotta right. do this, I gotta 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 I gotta meditate, I gotta meditate, I gotta wake up so I can meditate. And there was a little bit of that uh to it. A kind of rajasic feel, as they say in Vedic tradition. So th- when I learnt with you, that completely went. And the idea of giving myself a hard time about it of stressing if I fell asleep, if I was, you know, my mind was going nonstop or if I was following the mantra and halfway through all of a sudden my mind went or, right. yeah, I don't know, I just had a lot of judgments about it. And I think that really went. Well, I think just, just to, for the listener, um, the word meditation has many different connotations these days and basically science has identified three types of meditation. One where you do concentration or control of the mind. Another where you're just observing like a mindfulness meditation. You're not Mm. doing anything but just observing. And the third is this transcendental meditation, which you and I practice, which allows the active, excited, rajasic, you know, Mm. agitated mind to just all your thoughts to just settle down to a level of calm deep within. And it's the ease and the effortlessness which is distinguishes TM from other forms of meditation. And if you make any effort, it it stops. It yes. stops that settling down. Yep. And then it's frustrating, and then you can't do it, and then you get sort of bummed out with yourself because yep. I can't clear my mind of thoughts, and nobody can do that. And so that, and you get a, as Hugh said, when you learn transcendental meditation, you get a mantra, yep. which is a sound that has no meaning, which just you use as a vehicle for the surface. I like to use the example. And then I'm going to stop talking because you really want to hear <laughs> Hugh here. But no, it's you get good to, you know, for me to hear this again. You get, to, you get to, you know, it's like waves on the surface of the ocean, and that's like the gotta gotta active thinking mind. And deep within every human being is a level of the mind that's already and always calm, just mm-hmm. like the ocean has a level that's calm. And so TM just allows effortless access. Let's talk for a little bit about how, how um, meditation has helped you in your profession, whether it's balance, work-life balance or mm. on the set. How, how does it help you? Well, I think the one thing about my job is there is a, a level of stress that's easy to buy into. You don't necessarily know what is coming up next month or next year. You're always learning something different. It doesn't matter how long you're doing it. Each new role or each new job you do, whether it's hosting or an acting role or film or theater, there's some element about it that is risky, that is frightening. And that can bring stress. And it's also a good thing. Uh, I think creatively it's it's a good thing to have a sense of the unknown. I'm trying something I haven't done before. It kind of brings things out of yourself that surprise you. But I used to find that stress uh, difficult to cope with. Um, I would internalize it. I would uh, – my wife used to say, oh, after like something I was nervous about, she would say, oh, good, I got my husband back. That feeling that you were there but not fully there because you were a part of your brain, a big part or a small part, depending on the job, was concentrating and worrying about what was going to happen. And for me, the best way to handle that was the meditation. So I meditate before I hosted the Oscars. I meditate before I go on stage. I meditate in the morning and lunchtime when I'm on a film set. And it's like it resets. I'm not saying I'm never frightened anymore or that I don't have stress, but I like the analogy of a glass of water. When you first pour it, it's cloudy. Mm. Um, When you're stressed, that's what your mind is like. It's kind of cloudy. And after I meditate, all that sinks to the bottom and the water is clear and the energy is finer and the decisions you make are more authentic and... I think you're more economical with your energy, with your time, in every way. You're more able to listen to other people. And as an actor, that's all you've got. Your only tools you really have is being present, being clear, and listening. So it helped me in every way. I mean, immeasurably. I'm a way different person from when I began meditation. Wow. Well, and completely different. And how about that transition from you're on stage, you know, or you're surrounded by like mm. I'll talk to your wife Deb, and I'll say, "Where's Hugh?" You know, and, she, and oh, he's out with all the people who adore him. But now you got to come home, and you got Oscar, your son, or right. your daughter, and all the demands. That transition. Do you find that you find that your practice of TM over these years has helped with that, or oh, keeping yeah. who you are in place? Yeah, because daily you're practicing joining your true self, which is this calm, peaceful, blissful, limitless self. Right? So that exists all the time. 
once the mind starts going, and as uh, I've heard it said beautifully, the mind is a, a, a wonderful servant but a terrible master. And most of us live with our mind mastering our day. I've got to do this, I've got to do that, I'm worried about this, what about this, I should have, I shouldn't. Our mind can run the day. So for me, I every day through meditation, I'm practicing reconnecting with my true self. So that I parlay into any situation. When I walk out of a car on a red carpet, there's 3,000 people cheering. Deep down, I actually I'm connecting with their calm inner self. And that's how I think about it and that's what I feel. So you can it, it's not that you don't, I don't get excited or that you don't enjoy life or I, I don't go crazy sometimes, I have fun. But there's always one foot a little outside going, this is fun, but really – it's all calm. And that's where how meditation has helped. It doesn't matter what situation I'm in. People say, oh, you're down to earth. And I go, no, it's just that meditation right. makes me see what's true and real. And anybody can be down to earth if they have access it, to that level. Now, how it's, about- not a, it's not a talent. Right. Meditation is not a talent. No one is better than anyone else at it. It's a, it's a technique. Isn't it? The, the, anyone it's just can accessing. Learn. Anyone can do it. And it's deliberately invented so that anyone on the planet can do it. That's what I love about it. Yeah. It's, it's not, there are some forms of meditation that are very difficult and right. you have to aspire to and you wear robes and you're, right. you know, it's like you're in the top of the Himalayas and only right. for them. That's, I always wondered, why do they get the meditation? They're the ones who have the least worries. Right, right exactly. The rest of us on, <laughs> down here in, you know, in New York or you know, San Francisco, Los Angeles, anywhere, the pressure, the demands, yep. we're the ones who need access to that. Yes. And that's the beauty of this is it gives access to anyone. Yeah. I also want to say that, Hugh, you and Deb have been very, very supportive of David Lynch's foundation, yeah. the work we're doing to bring. Yeah. Well, I think it's so important what you guys are doing. First of all, in terms of access, um, Meditation was invented for everybody. And what you're allowing it to do is, is be given and made accessible to anybody at any time, no matter where you're from. But you're particularly focusing on those people who really need it, returned service men and women um, suffering from post-traumatic stress, um, women from battered homes or, you know, who have had sure. abuse, kids from really tough upbringings. And, and – to be at your event is one of the most, uh, every year, the, the David Lynch Foundation event is one of the most emotional nights you can ever have because you see people's lives saved, literally, and changed forever through this simple technique. And it's something that's available. It, n- there is no barrier to it. it money, it, nothing. But if people say to you, but isn't this a religion? What do you say? No, it's not. It's just a technique. You, you could be... An atheist who meditates. You can be a Christian who meditates, a Muslim who meditates. It, it's, it's irrelevant. It's like saying, is walking a religious thing? No. We all walk from A to B or not. Maybe you catch a car. It's a choice. It's available to anyone. And the quality of your life is changed forever. In fact, I always, I, to be honest with you, when I first learned meditation, I told you I was a drama school. Mm. I, everything I learned about it and the benefits of it, I, I kept thinking, this can make me a better actor. Oh, hey, this is great. I'm going to sign up for this. It's making me more present, more energetic, and I want to be a good actor, as good as I can be. And it was about, I would say, eight months into meditating, and I had a very clear thought one day. I was like, oh, hang on. No, meditation is the center of it all. Meditation is where all activities can spring from, where it's like the deepest well possible. So if I act or parent or be a husband or throw a baseball or wash up, if I do it after meditating, it's a whole different activity. This is Success Without Stress with Bob Roth on Sirius XM Indy 104. Bob Roth, executive director of the David Lynch Foundation, has helped people from all walks of life transform their lives. This is Success Without Stress with Bob Roth on Sirius XM Indy 104. Success Without Stress, and we're back with Hugh Jackman. The whole purpose of meditation, I mean, at least what I know with, with a TM, is that the per- it's not an end in itself. You're not meditating as an escape. You're not meditating to get away right. for the 20 minutes. It's as a preparation for activity. Yeah. It's to bring that inner calm, that clarity, your own true inner yeah. self everywhere into everything you're doing. And that's the benefit of meditation, not right. you know, something 
just oh I'm I'm pulling away from right. everyone. It makes you be- makes one a better father, makes one a better mother, actor, son, daughter, all that sort of stuff. I mean, p- people say to me all the time, "Oh, you're so busy. How do you do it?" it, it uh, there's not a person going around this city who's not busy, who's overstretched, probably tired. I mean, there's a number of times I meditate where I just fall asleep, and I, it was you, the one who said to me, "That's cool. Yeah, that's what you need. It's, it's what, what your, your body, body wants. It's what your body wants." So there's something about it, it gives you what you need whenever you need it um it has literally changed my life and i would like to add here um <clears throat> the the beauty also of this and the reason why we're do- david lynch foundation is doing and doing programs in businesses and schools and hospitals and military bases is not just because of our anecdotal experiences because there's an enormous amount of evidence there's an enormous amount right. of published over 350 published research studies by journals like the American Medical Association, American Heart Association, mm. funded by the National Institutes of Health, and now the Department of Defense, that show profound benefits to not only reducing stress and anxiety and tension, but actually waking up the brain, making allowing us naturally to be more focused, more centered, more creative, and yeah. more compassionate as well. Sometimes people... Go ahead. I don't know about you, but I still, 20 years later, I still feel stress. By the way, a friend of mine said to me the other day, he said, why do we call it stress? You never hear a kid saying I'm stressed. Like a six-year-old doesn't say I'm stressed. They say I'm scared. And I said, if you, every time you're going to say the word stress, you say scared, mm. then it's you admitting what's going on. It's much easier to solve. I still get frightened by things. I mean, I'm going to host the Tony Awards. I will have a thought in there of <laughs> we're live TV and uh, I want to do well and I, you know, I'm – I have ambition, and so there is a level of fear, a level of stress. And I suppose what the meditation has given me is an ability to not only cope with it, but to accept it, accept it as part of life. Actually, sometimes fear is a good thing. I mean, hey, if if you're a caveman and you know a dinosaur is running towards you, or a lion, or whatever, it's good to have some fear to help it, you run away. It's you know actually, what I mean? it's actually, uh, <laughs> science has identified that. They say that demands and pressures and hosting the uh, Tonys, that's not stress. Stress is how I respond to those right, demands. Right. And if I have, if people know, you know, listeners, if you didn't sleep well for a few days, everything causes stress. Yeah. Everything. And if yeah. you're on top of your game, yeah. it, if you get stressed, you bounce back more quickly. And yes. I think what meditation does is it allows a person to bounce back more quickly or yeah. naturally put things in perspective. So, okay, this is not the end of the world. I'm going to be doing this thing. I'm going to do the best I can. I'm still going to be nervous, but maybe not as petrified as if I hadn't had that moment to connect with my higher self, to connect with that pure consciousness within. I haven't really seen you nervous. Do you get nervous? There's a long pause here. Um, (laughs) I think if I had to walk out and host the Tony Awards, I think I would be nervous. But I mean, I saw your energy level at that David Lynch Foundation event because you were running it and you were were looking after everybody and making sure. I saw your energy level go up, but you became very kind of calm, clear, and authoritative in a way. Like very, you were a great leader, but I, I haven't seen you nervous. I would say that it used to be for me that if I was in one of those organizational modes, you know, you're going a million, and then I had to walk out on stage, nobody cares that you've just been running around. They want to see someone calm. So I would get nervous. God, am I going to pull it together? So I'm, and I think from meditation and just grow, you know, growing up, the transition is easier for me, yeah. you know, and just like a transition from, for you, you go Mm. out on the red carpet and then you go home with, with your kids. So just transitions, I think is easier. I think, Transcendental meditation for me has helped me with those transitions. Yeah. I mean, you must be really heartened by how the the foundation is growing and how, I mean, you're expanding into so many different areas all the time. It's going. And the thing is, is it's, this is an interesting point. I went out and spoke a little while ago at the California Foundation, um, and, which is the fifth largest foundation in, in, in America. And their focus is on the health and well-being of Californians and the whole country. Right. And they have now identified as the number one health epidemic in America and the world, not AIDS, not cancer, not heart disease, but stress. Really? Trauma and toxic stress. Yeah. Because they say, if you have AIDS, there's a pill or cocktails of pills. If you have, you know, some cancer, you can, you can take some, you know, chemo or something. 
Mm. But there's nothing modern medicine can give you to prevent this, the toxic effects of those ch- challenges, yeah. the trauma and stress, and it's everywhere. Yeah. And they wanted me to come out there, and we're going to be teaching their staff because they said, isn't it interesting that the most modern epidemic, trauma, the antidote is not a pill, but the most ancient practice of accessing yeah. calm and quiet that lies, as you said earlier so exquisitely, deep within every human being. Hmm. So with that, I, I am, I mean, I've been teaching for 42 years yeah, and it's only the last few years that things are just taking off. I mean, really? we, we can't keep up with it. And I think it's a perfect storm. Problem of trauma, stress, yes. toxic is great. The hoped for antidote, which was some magic pill like Xanax, yes. isn't really working yeah. or Prozac. And the research on, on TM that shows that it's yeah. incredibly effective. And when we get tired, I, I, I'm still guilty of this. You're traveling around tired, I've got to do interviews. And, so, uh, get me a coffee. Which, you know, said, oh, good, it'll get me up. But it actually just exacerbates the stress level, really. Um, but, but the nice thing, though, with meditation is that you can also enjoy coffee. You can enjoy wine. You can enjoy. Oh, but yeah. what we find good. is. <laughs> we don't. Yeah. What we find is, is that we're less self-medicating ourselves. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like in the morning, I'm stressed, I'm exhausted, I'm wiped out. Well, gosh, if you took time to meditate, wake up the brain. Now I have my five espressos. Yes. And so now with yeah. meditation, now what you have is, oh, I, I love to taste a coffee. Or yes. I love a glass of wine, yeah. but I'm not doing it because I'm out of my mind. Yeah. Um, I, just I pointed, think meditation yeah. for me ultimately is the fastest, best way to living an authentic life. And isn't that what we want? I mean, I'm a parent and how to be authentic in what you think to what you say and to what you do. And this is rare. This is huge. What you just heard, this is what I get asked all the time because I've taught famous people. They say, well, who's, who's the most authentic? Who's the best guy? And I said, they're all great. But Hugh and Deborah Lee, because this point you just made, how many people care about authenticity? I mean, that statement, they mm. are who they are, what other people think of them. Talk yeah. a little bit more about that. I've just read this book by Sam Harris. It's about a 40 page book. You'll, you'll read it on a plane and it's called lying. And the opening sentence is, is lying ever okay? And it really delves into the white lie. And it's, it's fascinating because uh, we tell them all the time. And I've spot, spotted myself, exaggerate, I don't want to hurt their feelings or be kind. Or I'm in an interview situation. It's, you know, I'll exaggerate a little bit. But that's a little inauthenticity. Right there, a little one that leads to another, leads to another. The meditation for me is the best way for me to get a good viewpoint on being authentic. It's, it's not easy to do, but the more authentic you are in life, I think the happier you can become. Oh, sorry. It's, I'm just being given a note saying it's called a liar. I'm pretty sure it's not, actually. It's called lying. But who's Sam Harris, check it, out. Sam check it out. Sam Harris. Everybody here can just Google as we're talking sure. here. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, but is that something that was all, that authentic self, is that something that, you were raised that way, that you grew up with that, or is that something that just came with your natural maturing? Or was that as a result of meditating for a few years and then that dawned and then you, I mean, where did that desire for authenticity come from? I was brought up in a religious household. So the idea when I was brought up is having a relationship with God, which was about being, I suppose, about being honest, you know. But really for me, So I could trace back to that. But really for me, I think when my journey to become an actor, that your any creative field or particularly being an actor starts with the idea of knowing yourself, being honest with yourself, working out who you are as a person. Because if you don't have that down, how how in the hell can you play someone else? You know, so your only resource, your library as an actor is other people. Mm-hmm. The more authentic you are with yourself, the more you understand yourself, the clearer you see other people, what motivates them, why they do what they do. And so that's where it really began. And then when I went to the School of pra- Practical Philosophy, we were introduced to this idea that is on the Delphic Oracle, just two words for life, know thyself. And there's no quicker way to that or more effective way to that than through meditation. I mean, uh, you, I know you felt this, but, and there'll be a lot of listeners who meditate, but 
some of the clearest ideas or the epiphanies I have in life will sometimes happen during meditation or straight mm-hmm. after meditation. Mm-hmm. The little the lies we tell ourselves or the way we dupe ourselves or convince ourselves we're doing the right thing, but everything becomes clear and the truth ends up coming out. Now, just time for a few more questions. Talk a little bit about your son and changes you've seen in him, Oscar Yogi. I he's think, an extraordinary human being. Yeah. I mean, he's By 14. the way, while I said, when I said to you, no one is better than anyone else at meditation, in my head I was like, actually, I have a feeling Oscar might be better than all of Oscar's us. Oscar's the most extraordinary <laughs> 14-year-old that I've ever met. I mean, yeah. smart, 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 and yeah. deep, wise old soul. Really wise. Actually the <clears throat> most authentic person I know. And, <laughs> yeah, and frighteningly so. And really sensitive, yeah. very creative. And what I've seen in him over the years is particularly recently, he's turning 14. And like most people say, oh, teenage years, I see him blossoming. I see him owning the things that make him unique. Um, and his confidence has just grown more and more. I mean, we, uh, we just had a party for 50 kids from all his entire grade. And just to see him interact with all of them in his own way after being at the school for one year, I was just like, How I was so proud of How might he have been him. before? He was... Or how was he? Before? He was quite stressed, actually. I think an anxious kid. Oh, had a lot of nervous at a lot of things. Um, didn't feel like he fitted in because his interest didn't match other people's interest. He was way ahead. He would be way more at home talking to you about the Bhagavad Gita than he was. You know, all the kids want to talk about and swap baseball cards, and he was. It was a disconnect. And now he's able to enter that world as well as still talk to you about the Upanishads or whatever. It is. Didn't you say you went into a bookstore once and he went right over to look? Oh, at yeah. <laughs> as soon as we went in there, all he wants to do is go to not just the self help books, but like the classical text, the Indian text, and yeah. all this. He carries around with him sometimes <laughs> the Quran, the, the 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 Old Testament, and the New Testament because he's. Drawing Drawing on all of them, you know? He's my Wikipedia. I just that. He's my, he's my Siri guru. I just say, you know, yes. last night we got a discussion about, I don't know, Joseph Stalin for some yes, reason. Right. He was just talking about, oh, he was born. I said, How do you know these things? He you just, know, they say that at school. Like, uh, you know, his knowledge is phenomenal. And unlike me, when I was little and probably still today, I, I don't mind people knowing what I know. I'll probably show off a little. He couldn't care less. If you know what, I, if it comes up in conversation, great. If not, no yeah, problem. Right. I mean, he is, as I said, the most authentic person I know. Well, coming from my a wife man, as well. The whole family. Yeah. Your whole family is just. I now, mean, Deb is literally, there is nothing in her brain that stops the thoughts coming out of her mouth. <laughs> it's, if no. you ever want to know, and she's a brilliant actor, worst liar I know. Never, she can never lie. Pe- people do one time, uh, never had an unspoken thought. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> That's Deb. <laughs> yeah. Well, we could go on and on. I know you have a lot more to do. Oh, this was you. Great, This man. was absolutely very satisfying. I really appreciate you and Michelle and everyone for giving us the time to, to do this. And Pleasure. Did we come on with a, what was the definitive? Lying. You're right. I'm wrong. Whoa. Hey, wait. Wrong. What? I am wrong. <laughs> You've got to take them when you get them. I- <laughs> 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 Thanks, so, Mary. So, so this is Bob Roth, and you're listening to Success Without Stress on Indy 104. And I, my guest has been a very dear friend and a great human being, authentic man, and a brilliant actor, Hugh Jackman. Thank thanks, you very Bob. much, Hugh. Thank you, man. And thanks for all you do. When we come back after the break, we're going to be talking with Tom North. Tom is the author of True North, the shocking truth about really domestic violence in homes throughout the country and his own personal experience in one of America's most famous families in the 1960s. This is Success Without Stress with Bob Roth on Sirius XM Indy 104.